Hello and welcome back to Everard Junction. In today's video we're going to be continuing the build of the town scenery, um, specifically working our way around the corner over there. So plenty to be getting on with, I have made a reasonable bit of progress and I now have enough footage to put together a video. So it's been a couple of weeks since the uh, previous video where I repainted that uh, Hornby Class 31. Uh, big thanks to the response on that, a lot of you seem to really enjoy that. Um, even those of you that had uh, no intention of repainting a loco but found the process interesting. So thanks for all the positive feedback on that one. It has obviously been some time since that was filmed and I haven't uploaded anything since then. Long term viewers of the channel should be aware now, uh, that is how I operate. Everard Junction is a hobby and it always will be my hobby. I do this because it is fun. Now I know a lot of you already know that but I just wanted to re-clarify it just to ensure that those of you um, who perhaps don't know how this channel operates, uh, that is how it operates. It is a hobby, it's something I do in my free time and I do it because I enjoy it. So although it has been a number of weeks since the previous video, I have made a fair bit of progress. Um, you will see shortly in this particular video, make a reasonable bit of progress around the corner on the town scene. And I've also made quite a bit of progress on some of the rolling stock on the layout, various weathering projects and bits and pieces. Um, some new bits and pieces have also turned up uh, on the layout. Um, so what I will do is film a separate layout update video um, which I'll upload uh, about a week or so after this one goes live so you can catch up on the sort of general stuff that's been going on with the layout. I've decided to uh, start things off over here need some more ballasting to be completed I think so I'm just going to continue this cork strip along so that we can lay some more cable trunking. Next thing I need to do is actually build some more cable trunking from the kit. Just applied some uh, copy decks adhesive You've seen me use this before, just waiting for it to uh, go off and then we'll uh, stick the cable trunking down. I've also added a few of the uh, little junction pieces here as I'm going to add a couple of uh, relay boxes along the side of the line in this area just before we get to the station. I think that will uh, just add a little bit more interest to this area. Okay, well I've added the uh, cable trunking, uh, I've yet to add the lids, uh, obviously it does need the lids, um, I'll add those later. Um, this just, uh, wanted to get this down first before I did the ballasting, just so I know um, where I can put the ballast and uh, where I can't put the ballast. Okay, reasonably happy with that. We'll sort out the reversing siding later. Doesn't matter, we've got to do some weathering anyway, so we'll sort that out. Um, it's surprising, isn't it, how um, light the uh, the ballast looks when you first lay it down. I mean, if you compare it to, to these tracks, this really looks really very in your face. Um, so uh, looking forward to uh, getting this all toned down and weathered. First thing to do is to uh, apply the glue, stick the ballast down in the usual way. You've seen me do this several times before. Spray some isopropyl alcohol over the ballast and then using an eyedropper, deposit a 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water and then wait a day or two for it to dry.
Oh dear, it appears the uh, glue that I've used, um, the container I've, I mixed it in rather, um, certainly had some old glue in it that had not fully cured and it's, as you can see, it's reactivated partially um, and it has ended up going over my nice ballast. Now, most of it should dry clear, but I would like to get rid of some of the bigger lumps. So I'm not going to have to sit here and painstakingly with a brush pick off the lumps of glue from my mistake. But it goes to show we are all learning. We all still make mistakes and silly errors from time to time. But as long as you can resolve those problems and overcome them, it's all good. I've left the uh, ballast to dry for 24 hours. It has now dried. And fortunately, the uh, glue that I was a little bit concerned about has dried clear. And there's no evidence that it was even there. So next thing to do is to uh, just uh, vacuum off any excess material, um, get any bits off of the uh, sides of the rails and uh, do some weathering. Okay, time has come to uh, do some weathering. I've cleaned all the loose bits of ballast off of the tops of the rails and I've cleaned anything out of where the wheels of the trains are going to run, so we should be okay in that respect. So now it's time to do some weathering. I try to use acrylic paints if I can when I'm working on the actual layout. Um, the fumes from the enamels can uh, get a bit annoying and a bit uh, nasty. Um, obviously I have a spray booth for when I'm doing um, painting on the, you know, the models themselves. Um, but uh, where possible, if I'm going to be up here for any length of time, an acrylic paint is always handy. Um, and uh, I quite like to use the uh, the Tamiya, or in this case the uh, Vallejo uh, paints. So here we have 70, oh, uh, 7871, sorry, uh, which is leather brown. I find this is a pretty good sort of match to sleeper grime. So I'm going to be uh, using that to weather the sides of the rails. The rail's now painted, it's time to do some airbrushing. For this I do actually use some enamel paint. I like the way the uh, rail match enamel uh, dries, it has a nice finish to it, as you can see on the bits I've done previously. So I'll make sure I do the rails first, quick bit of airbrushing, and then I shall uh, run away and uh, wait for it to dry whilst I uh, spend some time somewhere else.
weathering has now dried and I've just touched up the reversing siding. You saw a bit of ballast uh, got onto that so I've just gone over that again in a couple of places and tidied that up. On the whole quite pleased with that. So now I'm going to uh, add on the lids to the cable trunking and uh, we'll also just clean off any excess paint that has dried on the surface of the rails such as down here and you can use a, uh, a track rubber for doing that comes right off. So with everything now dry and rails all nice and cleaned, I've just gone along and uh, fitted the uh, lids to the cable trunking. Runs quite a long way, luckily you don't have to cut them all out individually if you don't want to. You can lay them on as a strip. And of course I've added a few places, such as there, where some of the lids have come off. Just adds that little bit of uh, interest to a, you know, a small area. So if we move around over here, I've uh, fitted some relay boxes. Again, it just adds that bit of interest. They're just sitting on some little card platforms at the moment. We'll sort out some ground cover and some realistic surfaces for those at a later date. So the next thing to turn my attention to is this small area here at the end of the siding. It would be unusual for a loco to be butted right up against the buffers. So although we've got lots of nice weathering going on in there, I think a little bit of undergrowth certainly wouldn't go amiss. You can see I've experimented and messed around with some longer bits of grass just there. Not particularly happy with those, it was just a test. Um, I think the colour's a bit too light and they're too tall. So I'm going to experiment with this little area and see if I can't make it look a little bit overgrown. It's not going to have too much plant life going on as it is right smack bang in the middle of two very busy pairs of lines, but uh, certainly something is going to spring up in this sort of general area. So I'm just going to use uh, various random bits of foliage and scenery that uh, I think will look appropriate and sort of see if I can build this area up. This will be the first attempt, obviously. If I'm not happy with it, we can always, we can always tear it up and try again. So uh, I shall get cracking. Most of the stuff I'm going to use is made by Woodland Scenics, but I have no idea what I'm actually going to use yet. Right, well, what I've ended up doing is just mixing together lots of different uh, types of static grass, different colours, different lengths, into uh, one big uh, overgrown mess. So uh, obviously there's a lot of excess on there at the moment. I'll vacuum it off when it's dry and we'll see how it looks. So while that's drying, we'll move on to something else. Um, as you can see, the retaining wall sort of runs out about there. Um, it's been on my list of things to do for a long time. Um, so over the last couple of evenings I have made um, another section of retaining wall which should take us all the way over to the uh, road bridge which is further around the corner. And there we go. Obviously it's just sitting loosely at the moment. We need to secure it properly and it needs to be painted. So as you can see, we now have a nice run of retaining wall all the way around this corner, heading towards the station.
It's just made from lots of bits of uh, plastic card of various sizes. I just made sure I matched the dimensions of the previous wall, but I did uh, take the opportunity to make it a little bit taller, as although it's very difficult to see on camera, the road and the terrain does slope downwards over to the station side of the layout. So I have uh, made the wall a little bit taller and will uh, adjust the terrain to suit. In this corner here, you can see it's much higher there. So we'll just uh, blend that in, make it look convincing. Over here it stops, ready for a bridge. There'll be a, uh, this will be a, a two lane road, which will go underneath the station. So I've got to make a few more bits and pieces of bridge uh, to go across the top of there. And then we'll start the retaining wall off again, work our way all the way down to the end of the layout. So I'll get that glued into position and uh, do some painting. And obviously that now opens up the uh, terrain opportunities in this area. I can start to build things up. So I've got a few ideas already. Over in this corner, I think an office building of a few stories in height will look quite good. That's in the works downstairs at the moment. It's my first uh, serious attempt at doing some scratch building, so I'm taking the time to learn the ropes myself before I do any filming. And uh, over here, not exactly sure yet, possibly a garage, possibly a car park, possibly something completely different. It's not big enough for houses. As you can see, the gardens now are really becoming very, very small indeed. So rather than just add yet more terraced houses, something different in this area, I think would certainly make things look more interesting rather than just repeating what we've already done over on this corner. So I'm gonna get this glued into position. I've decided to paint it after it's been glued up there. Um, access is excellent. It's gonna be no more difficult to paint it sitting upright than it is painting it somewhere else. Okay, that uh, section is now drying. Should get a good bond to the top of the baseboard just there. So uh, I shall work my way around and glue the rest of it. You don't need to see me doing any of that. The grass is now dried. I've just vacuumed off the, uh, the excess and pulled out some of the uh, sort of stray bits that look uh, really far too, uh, far too tall. Um, I think it might need uh, a little bit more work. It's, uh, it's not bad. I don't think it's too bad, but uh, needs something else it's just grass so uh, I might add some more to that in this video I might uh, leave it for a minute and uh, and see see what I can do and uh, update you in the next video I've made a bit more progress in this area uh, we've added some sculpt mold to sort of get the uh, terrain to blend in better to the slope of the road and the retaining wall. And I've also painted the retaining wall in the basic colors that I've used uh, previously. Um, it's not weathered or anything yet, I'll, I'll add to that later, uh, but uh, the bare bones are complete. So next thing I'm gonna do is to continue to lay the pavement on the uh, side of the road, uh, down towards the station side of the layout and then we'll start uh, working on some of the scenery that's actually gonna go in this area here. Uh, done quite a bit of research and uh, it's surprising how many little spaces there are where there are just trees and bushes in built up areas. Um, obviously, uh, you don't want uh, buildings and brickwork absolutely everywhere. And certainly once you get out of uh, London on the Great Western Main Line, places like Reading, places like Slough, um, there are patches of uh, greenery in and around the built up centres of town where the station is. So I think it would be nice to have some trees or some sort of greenery going on in an area here. I've got a building that's going up down the road, it's a reasonable sized office building. We've got retaining uh, wall going up this way with the houses. Um, so uh, something just to break it up I think would look quite nice.
As usual, because the road actually works, I've made sure that the kerb is not too close to the cars so that everything can uh, drive past quite safely. started to lay the pavement and over here I think we need a bit more sculpt mold it's difficult to see on camera but there is a fair bit of a drop off um, from the edge of the road and that's going to use up a lot of filler so I'll put some sculpt mold in there and then I've just marked out roughly where I want the next bit to go which is most likely going to be a small parking area for the office building which is just all sort of to the left on the corner I'll show you the office building when I finished it I haven't finished it yet so it will remain unseen until I'm happy It's been a couple of days and the sculptor mold is now dried. I've also laid the pavement just using some standard smooth uh, filler which we got from Wix and uh, now it's ready to have some paint applied to tie this area together. Over here I've got a small parking area and I've sanded through the sculpt mold and filler in a couple of places down to the foam to create a, a pothole if you like. Um, this is not going to be a very well serviced area by the local council so it should have some nice potholes. Okay I've made a reasonable bit of progress since the last clip. Uh, the uh, pathway is now uh, nice and smooth. I've made the uh, car park here for the staff which will be attending the uh, the office building that we're going here and I've just started to do some of the basic painting bits and pieces. I've also added a small sort of relief wall in the back there just to fill up a little spot so uh, now I'm going to uh, do a spot of painting uh, looking forward to seeing how the car park looks when it's all painted up um, I've gone over this a few times already and experimented with different bits but basically I've rubbed through the filler um, down to the uh, Celotex that's underneath to create uh, some potholes as this car park uh, will certainly not be very well managed or looked after
but I've done quite a bit more painting and as you can see I've also weathered the uh, retaining wall I've just used the uh, dry brushing method and I've also used a few weathering powders as well just to give it that sort of you know worn appearance make it look like it's a couple of decades old as you saw in the uh, time lapse for most of the uh, actual painting of the ground cover I used the airbrush this is uh, particularly good when you're working with absorbent surfaces like I am here so the road is made of paper the path is made of filler and the terrain is made of sculpt mold brushing it does take quite a while and take several coats so by airbrushing you you uh, end up using quite a bit less paint I used uh, the water-based Vallejo paints I particularly like using these, they've got a lovely finish and they airbrush very nicely and of course being water-based they're safe to airbrush you know, without a mask or anything so uh, it was a nice job doing that and those are the colours I've used I've used them in varying amounts but uh, it's, it's up to you at the end of the day uh, what sort of finish you're going for but they're the four basic colours that I used to create this I've also just touched in the uh, curbstones just to highlight them, nice little bit of detail just makes it look a little bit better. Very pleased with the potholes, actually got some depth to them, just like the real thing. So there's obviously still a very long way to go with this area, but I will just start adding some of the details and a little bit of ground cover before we finish this video off. I've just added a bit of uh, ground cover to the top of that uh, small uh, wall over there, and we'll have some weeds and rubbish um, along there behind the office building. So I've just uh, vacuumed off the excess scatter and as you can see we've got a nice patchy effect going on there. So the next thing to do is to add some static grass and uh, some of that I'll put straight over the top of this ground cover and in other places I'll use the, uh, the bare patches that I've deliberately left behind. Later on I shall add some foliage and uh, I also plan to add a couple of trees as well. So that completes the grass, I shall of course be adding some trees and some bushes which is why I've left some uh, bare spots, but I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. So the next thing I've been doing is just adding some double yellow lines to the side of the road. This is a scale model scenery self adhesive kit that I've had in my pile of bits for a while and very pleased with it. Easy to apply, it looks good. It is of course far too luminous at the moment so I will be toning it down, a little bit of uh, airbrushing and that should look nice and weathered and used. I've also added a, a couple of marks in the car park and you can see I've broken the uh, the line 
where the pothole is, where the tarmac has been disturbed. And of course, they're far too bright. They need toning down too. So I will sort that out with the airbrush at a later date. So that's a logical place to stop for this video. We've just started to add some of the finer detail. There is a lot of detail to add to this area, obviously missing the trees, the bushes, the car park needs a fence or something around it. Um, the markings need weathering. Um, I also need to add obviously the center line to the road, the center road markings. So there's plenty to do, but uh, we've got all the basics done in this video. Not forgetting as well, all of this track in the background is now ballasted and weathered. So got quite a bit done. So as a little bonus, I shall leave you with a sneak peek at the office building that I've been working on. Now this is only in its early stages, it is not complete, not complete by any means. But this is what I've been working on over the last few evenings. So there we have a horrible prefabricated office building of 1960s vintage. This is scratch built. It's my first serious go at proper scratch building, and it is based on a real building. It's based on this monstrosity, which you can find in Watford if you want to go and have a look. So this is my first genuinely serious go at scratch building. I have dabbled in the past with little scratch builds and little bits and pieces, but this is by far the biggest project I've had a go at. Once again, only the basics are done. There's still lots of detail to add. Drainage, TV aerials, litter, um, interior, of course, you can see inside there's, there's nothing to see. It has no interior. But again, the basics are done. It, of course, needs weathering as well. So on the ground floor, we have a computer shop. You can see it's got uh, some of the latest models of Compaq just in stock with the new 486 processor that was released in 1989. So there'll be plenty of people heading down to the shop to see if they can get their hands on one of those. Next door, we have a shop that is at the moment vacant, but uh, I intend to turn it into an estate agent. And then on the first and second floor, I'm going to be uh, doing some sort of local insurance company, something along those lines, a local office. The building is made out of two millimeter art board, and then over the top of that, I have uh, applied some uh, sandpaper. Now, I forget what grit it is, but uh, it was lying around in the shed and it looks perfect for that sort of awful concrete rendering that you get on these prefabricated 1960s office buildings. And then of course I've made up some period correct windows with the obligatory colour coded bottom section that you often see on buildings of this vintage. So on the roof we have a base layer of uh, artboard again and then over the top of that we have some more sandpaper which I've painted black to sort of replicate that uh, horrible um, sort of roofing felt um, that you would often find on a building like this. And then over the top of that we've got a couple of uh, 3D printed uh, roof vents for some extra detail. Many thanks to Dave from Dean Park Station who got me some of those. They really add a lovely bit of detail. I think some uh, TV aerials and a little bit more stuff on the roof and uh, we should have something that looks quite convincing. So obviously there's still plenty more to do to that, it's still in the early stages, but uh, combined with the retaining wall, the car park, and uh, the little scene we've created around here, I'm quite pleased with how things are coming along. As I've said, it is only the basics, there's much more to do, and we will address that in the next part of the layout build series. So I'll leave it there, thank you for watching, I hope you picked up a couple of hints and tips or maybe a spot of inspiration and as always I will be back when time permits to make more progress on this scene. Well I must say I am quite pleased with how this area is coming along. The building is uh, is going to plan, it's going quite well. Uh, it's certainly uh, quite a challenge to put together and there will be more content on scratch building as I actually gain the skill in scratch building. I'm not prepared to just film something I don't know anything about. So uh, there might be a building or two that you don't see um, until I'm confident enough to film the process. But uh, there you go. Uh, there will be an update uh, on the Ford Granada that I'm restoring. I do get a lot of comments from people saying, how's the Granada coming along? Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm restoring a 1975 Ford Granada. It's been my pride and joy, labour of love, money pit, whatever you want to call it, for the last four years and um, it's, uh, it's really starting to look the part now. So uh, there will be an update on that in uh, the next uh, month or two. I can't say when exactly, we'll just have to see how things go. 
So I'll be back as soon as I can with the next Everard Junction related video. And um, until then, if you need another fix of 1980s model railway stuff, then feel free to check out Dave over at Dean Park Station. He's always got loads of uh, videos to see as he progresses with his very, very impressive Scottish region layout. And uh, also thanks again, Dave, for those uh, roof vents that you supplied me for the roof of my office building. I've certainly uh, added a real nice bit of detail.